Welcome to a new year and a brand new world for Blood Rain. A world where everything's ruined and vampires have taken over the world. Might as well respond with some pointless violence. Kagan's tower has to be the one left standing. Due north, across the park. Damn it. Gotta go. Look at that. Legitimate helicopters. Last level couldn't afford them. Damn, I'm a couple of that slow. indicates some level of attention to detail that has been lacking. Yeah, there's just a whole oh lot going on at this level. We are not the only ones committing violence this time. You guys are kind of like ninjas. I hate ninjas. Uh, do they carry big swords? Throw stars real quiet? They're ephemeras. Great, that means she's not far, right? I've got a bone to pick with her. She stood me up. More than was even intended. We were supposed to fight ephemera back in like the second level. But due to a glitch, she just didn't show up at all. Keep running! Keep running! Hey, you're interrupting my target practice! <sighs> So this blasted hellscape, uh, I've seen many trailers for this game, and basically all the footage from all the trailers takes place in this part of the game. They know their strengths. Okay, what do we have here? Gate I want to get through but can't. Crash chopper with spinning rotors, seemingly endless supply of determined minions. Hmm, I feel a plan coming on. So the minions, since the apocalypse, they've all been turned, because this is a world exclusively for vampires. Kagan's a vampire supremacist, and uh, he will not allow anyone to live unless they're a vampire. So these people are vampires, making them much, 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 much more powerful than all of the other minions we fought in the game. And they really throw us right into the deep end, because this is a killing puzzle, obviously. And if we target these guys, they will block our harpoons. We cannot grab them. We are required to grab them in order to get them into the helicopter blades, though. So what we gotta do is knock them down with a kick combo. But they're going to interrupt all of our combos. Because animations cannot be interrupted uh, on their part. On our part, we just gotta deal with it. Gotta make a withdrawal from the blood bank. Obviously, they're holding a weapon, so we cannot uh, drain them. Except using our ghost feed ability. How much more you think you can take? Only the third attack of our combo will knock the enemies down. There we go. Got one. And I'm glad that counted. As it very easily could not have. Rain threw her way over to the right. Ghost Feet is good for splitting up the duo, because you only want to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. And it's good for keeping our health up, but not good enough, as you can see. The first fight of this level is really, really hard. Technically, there were little easier fights up to this point, but uh, they're very easy to skip. This one, unskippable. It's the hardest fight in this entire level. So we are getting the worst part out of the way quickly. But it is by far the worst part. So let's get right back into it. We might see that loading screen quite a few times. I feel like my health is a little higher. Could be my imagination. And it doesn't matter because the enemies do so much damage. So when we're in rage, we will be unblockable. 
And then it dawns on him. I'm getting my Thus we can knock them down more easily. Get them in the blades. But our rage will not last very long. And now we can't recover our health. So it's a bit of a give and take here. And we're not getting very much on the take side. As far as I'm aware, there's no way to cheese this or simplify it, or make it any easier. Except by staying the hell away from the playground, because rain will stick to all the bulls over there. We'll start with some rage, get a few knockdowns going. Ooh, knock down one into the other. But during the cutscene, she gets back up. So that was not actually efficient. But it could have been. I almost discovered a way to make this fight easier. We we'll use the machine gun for a while. Now there's an idea. The shotgun knocks enemies down. There's no real way to punish it, unfortunately. And route ammo. Maybe we'll use that information for next time, because this one's not going well. Basically, every enemy in this level is a Kestrel. A very weak Kestrel with an extremely low health pool, but a Kestrel nonetheless. So, this is gonna take a little bit of effort. In fact, monumentally more effort than any previous fight in the game. But we'll get through it. I can confirm that this is humanly possible. Recently got into Kaizo Mario Hacks, because two of the best games of 2021 were Kaizo Mario Hacks. Arguably even more than two, but uh... There are certainly a lot of very, very good ones as of last year. And I need to check them out, but it is a monumental task to learn how to play Kaizo Hacks. And it sort of trivializes this fight by comparison. What is nice about those games is uh, you don't have a whole 20 second loading screen after every failure. But, uh,. Overall, this is somewhat easier than Luminescent, one of the hottest games of 2021 that most people haven't played. Okay, shotgun is the way to go. Instantly ragdolls people with weird effects, but ultimately it works out. She loves being bisected. And then another one gets impaled. That was very, very janky, but... I will take a game being overly ambitious with its cool action scenes and not being able to quite pull them off because that's hilarious. And it was still moderately cool. Be very careful, Rain. These minions are dangerous, but ephemeras turn vampires. Her Shadow Legion are far worse. They're silent and super fast. You will have to be faster. Expect the park to be crawling with them. Keep an eye on the shadows. Yes, the shadows. Ephemera's power comes from shadows. We would not know that because we haven't actually met her yet. And we got some more of these guys. You can't really grind resources off of them because it takes more resources than you would conceivably get from the fight. So when it's optional, they are best ignored. Oh, she's got a pull. Screw this. Oh, look at this. We got a bear statue, healthily labeled a bear. And a tiger statue, healthily labeled a tiger. 
Guess they couldn't afford the lion. Never fails, right? The one day I get to go to the zoo and none of the animals are out. Either it's too hot or it's raining or it's the end of the world. Ugh, kind of glad I missed feeding time, though. This do not sit smirshif devote me as viral crafter. God, you guys and your stupid secret dead languages, always showing off. So we face the Kestrel minions. Now let's face the Kestrel equivalent mini bosses that are upgraded versions of those minions. Already down. Never fails, right? So, despite the fact that these are supposed to be upgrades to the bondage ladies we just fought, and we have no health or resources to speak of. We do actually stand a chance here. We can build up our rage very quickly. Because they're stacked up. So we just gotta get near them, swing a few times. Plenty of rage. Then we pop that rage. And they will melt. Because their defenses are extremely poor. They don't try to defend themselves very much at all. Normally, you get behind one and it's dead. Maybe you try to yep, there went one there. They seem to be susceptible to like critical hits or something. Get through the zoo to the other side of the park. Keep heading north. You'll have to go through the world of reptiles building. Yeah, okay, lizards. No problem. Like the way we can normally chop a limb off of enemies, basically at random. We can do that to those mini bosses, which uh, makes them die very quickly. Before we move on, there's a lot of gore and nastiness to look at. Animal heads stripped of all flesh. God, maybe this is the line I was looking for earlier. Damn, I'm a couple of quarts low. Uh, another one. There's a crocodile at my feet, or perhaps an alligator. Maybe if we go into that reptile exhibit, it'll tell us. Rhino Head Fountain, and over here, a small cat head of some sort, and like a ram's head, which moves very poorly compared to all the other skulls. Cannot be changed from this position. Nice, gross little crap littered all over the place, because why not? Hanging bodies everywhere. They're really setting the mood. Hmm, looks like they have some kind of special insect exhibit going on. So instead of reptiles, we're actually going to be seeing a whole lot of bugs. Don't know why they didn't just make it the insect exhibit. Maybe they recorded that line already. We're stuck calling it the reptile exhibit. But obviously I'm going to free the bugs. Roam freely, roaches. With your no animation whatsoever. They still got a lot of business to take care of. They seem more than capable of doing it. Severin, what makes a corpse twitch? I give up. What makes a corpse twitch? It's not a riddle. I'm seeing the bodies of zookeepers. Definitely dead, but definitely twitching. What type of vampirism causes that? So we got a bit of a mystery here. Bugs seem to have pinned some corpses to the walls. Despite the fact that they're corpses, they're still wiggling. You saw the trees in the park and the desiccated animals. The shroud obviously causes some aberrant effects on nature. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna shoot one. Looks like I woke something up. Oh, come on, bugs. I thought we were friends. They're so slow as to be 
really harmless though. Let's just run away. Looks like our new insect pals just found something more interesting. So because we got far enough away from the bugs, they actually are our friends now. They forgot about us. They went for the easier meal, which was behind this gate. And now there is monster infighting. And we don't have to worry about much of anything at all. Besides this guy. Another one of these fights. I think it might be optional. Yeah. And because it's optional, we're gonna run away. Okay, perhaps this gate won't open until he's dead. But if nothing else, he's singled out for a while. It won't help, but it might make you feel And we're done with him. Yep. Random explosion occurs once we kill that guy. Jesus, they're everywhere. Guns don't even phase them, they just reform. Try to leave the nests alone. It sounds like gunfire attracts or disturbs them. Try not to use your dragons. No guns? Are you serious? How the hell am I? You'll just have to improvise, Rain. Secretly, I'm more than happy not using the guns. However, the game literally will not allow it. Oh, never mind. In my practice run, the game literally did not allow it. But here? Uh, Scout's Honor, I guess. Here we go, we solved all the glass problem. Right now, I'd bet you like to trade in those big swords for a couple of cheap lighters and a can of hairspray, huh? So, time for by far the laggiest room in at least any level we've seen thus far. Perhaps the entire game. Just so many enemies. The bug monsters cause a lot of slowdown on their own. Because it's a thousand little sprites moving all around. The game can barely handle it. Which I believe is less of a problem in other versions of the game. Certainly a good sales pitch for uh, the revamped version that just came out. Although I imagine it's still very high definition, tiny, non-moving sprites that form the bug monster. Which has to be pretty hilarious. Anyway, this guy's dead. Oh, bugs are coming for me. Bersko, ordinary good nos, nay. Aye, a nice of good nos, nice this day. Hey, oh man, I want one of those. Come here, you. Sometimes we can understand vampirish, sometimes we can't. Whatever is most uh, hilarious for Rain's pithy dialogue is what we get. Just a little extra rage and unleash it. So apparently this lady has a uh, flamethrower, and Rain believes that killing her will cause her to have a flamethrower as well. That was not very clear from the cutscene, because they did not animate the Dampier using the flamethrower. The flame just sort of appeared. Uh. 
And also, we've never actually acquired new guns in this game. We just keep adding features to our starting gun. Yeah, kind of stings, huh? Yeah. Didn't have any health or rage to deal with that. Let's see how far back it boots us. Yeah, I kind of figured it would be back before this guy. There should be a shotgunner over here. There we go. So while we're refighting this weird thing. Silent creep. Uh, at the end of the last video, after Ephemera betrayed Feral, she mentioned that uh, they have a brother. And uh, I kind of figured it would be another new character that they would introduce here at the end of the game. But obviously, it's the Frankenstein guy. The weird scientist who invented the shroud. And also, the fat guy the vampires can eat forever. So we've met him. Not in person, but we know his whole deal. Oh, he can teleport. Neat. Not even gonna use my rage on him this time. Because he's so easy. It's a waste. Now that I know there's another phase. Get out of here, Dampier. I'm trying to skip that cutscene. Gotta make a withdrawal from the blood bath. So yeah, that Frankenstein guy, same genetic pool as a weird bondage ghost and a like Rorschach mystique thing somehow. Ooh, what the fuck is going on with Kagan's DNA? Like they have the same family resemblance as Strong Bad's family. Truly bizarre. I really, really, really like the character design in this game, and how random and inconsistent it is. Because it absolutely should not be. Ignore this thing... and fight you. Vampire fights... This game just does not control well enough for... fair fights like this. As you can see... Went in there about as well as I possibly could have. Uh, came out dead. Ah, uh, back to this guy. What we can do, while we're fighting him, is walk away. Go to these people. Try and grab them from the back. They are distracted. And for some reason, my grab button is not working at all. Glorious. So now I've wasted more resources than I would have gained. But okay, got one. Got us a little bit of health. Now we gotta get out of the bugs because they will actually harm us quite a bit. And there we go. Bugs might be helping a little bit. Hopefully at least as much as they're harming. Jump to avoid Shuriken. That's how I like it, honey. So now we've just got Bugs and Teleporter. I like our odds this time. But the bugs are starting to damage me. Yep. Rain's locked onto the bugs for some reason. Now she's locked onto me, the player. Lock on becomes very important in these fights where uh, 
we have to try and maintain some semblance of control in this very poorly controlling action game. But we can do some fairly precise dodges that have incredibly long animations. Nonetheless, they are required to get into positions where the enemy will not block us. Okay. Can just about finish him off. How is he still alive? There he goes. Then the dampier comes in. Burns everything. But the fight basically resets. With this health top off, it'll be a little better. And with the ghost feed. There we go. Now I feel like we're pretty good. I kind of want to get this person down. Just for a little bit of extra safety. I think she's already been replaced by another shotgunner upstairs, though. So that was wasteful. Nonetheless, once we get anywhere near this lady... She should be good and dead. We do want to use uh, what the game calls Spectacrobatics, ridiculously enough, to dodge behind her, and then we will get the full effect of all of our damage, because she won't be able to dodge it. But now we've got a long slog of us dancing around each other dealing negligible damage. She's basically immune to guns, so not even gonna bother there. She's not building rage like I would expect based on the fights with the, the teleporters. because the teleporters will give you rage like nobody's business. This lady just drips a rage at a time. Kind of unfortunate. I do like her Swiss Army knife arm blades with like a bunch of different prongs. She's trying to corkscrew us. Glad she only has access to pistols, though. Ugh. Yeah, I'm just not getting the rage I need. Yeah. Brutal. Let's just jump ahead to when that fight is over, because... It's going to be exactly the same as what you just saw, except better for no good reason. That's done with. No idea what the deal was there, but uh, for some reason she just was not taking damage and was not generating any rage, so that took forever. It's weird because that was a super easy fight on my practice run. Rain, I've been thinking. If you had some way to create fire, you might have an effective weapon against those. Yeah, I'm already on that. Thanks, though. The uh, scripted crosstalk is uh, terribly paced, but at least they're trying. Walk softly, Rain. I don't think you want to disturb these new friends. Agreed. Huh. Park services is getting sloppy. Strictly speaking, you're never supposed to leave these on and attended. Oh, perfect. Why does this wood chipper need to have a noisy diesel engine? Yeah, the whole guns wake up the bugs doesn't matter at all. But I, I swear they disabled the gun button in my practice run. 
And they were supposed to do it here, but they decided not to. As glitches go, it is a very pointless and uh, not even easy to notice one. But it happened. Hey boys, that's a sweet machine you got there. But to really appreciate how it works, you need to see one from the inside. So we got a male version of the bondage ladies from all the way back in the first room. Identical in every way. They do like to stand around over in this corner to fight that bug monster. If I get him from behind, I should be able to grab him. That should do it. Generous hitbox on the wood chipper. It's weird that the zoo level of the Punisher also had a wood chipper that we could use to execute people. Perhaps this game was inspired, although it did come out the same year as the Punisher. So perhaps not. People were just really into uh, wood chippers at the zoo back in the year 2004. Bugs killed another guy. That's what I was looking for. These shotgunners will appear randomly. And they do not try to defend themselves. So they're just a free health refill. And since I was able to knock down one of the bondage guys, did a little ground execute on him. But the bugs killed just about everybody over there. I did hear another shotgun going off, though. Up, oh, stuck to a pole. Get him. Drain him. Now we can use the shotgun trick to finish this off. Although I'm sure we're all curious. So, we got our new flamethrower ability. After we did successfully beat the damp here. It's not much of a flamethrower, but it does kill the bug monsters, who then immediately respawn, of course. Like, obviously. Oh my god, this pole is going to be the death of me. Bondage guys are distracted, I get a free health refill. And now I should stop screwing around and fill that wood chipper. Didn't even get him anywhere near, and it still counts. The referee is on my side for once. Come over here, get distracted by the bugs. Where's he going? Oh, there is another, uh, like, tree branch over there that you can impale people on. But you don't want to do that because you want to get them in the wood chipper. He's going for the tree branch. Gets us some carnage, but we just want to get this puzzle over with. That's how I like it. That should do it. Very nice. All of our problems are solved. Except for the hulking mass of sentient bugs. But you know what? We'll just leave those to the vampires. The professional exterminators. Who do not have access to fire, so they're dead. Get a little health. And some rage. Yeah, 
and see what lies ahead. More unspeakable horrors. Roach is reading my flesh, I'd scream like a banshee. Ugh, should have got that dark gift clause in writing. Do you think it's cool? Really? It's not that cool. You're probably making it up as you go. Just one more thing that makes me want to slash the living hell out of you. Well, they're generating an anti-progress field, so Did let that hell slashing begin. Someone's got a shotgun around here, though. Those people are called blood donors. I guess they're in the pit here. Taking care of business. I got stuck to a wall for a second there. This is all fine. We'll ignore everything. Head into the pit of bugs and through the vampire door. Free refill of everything. Technically, it would have been more efficient to use this after the mini boss fight. But this will speed up that mini boss fight. Then we'll be able to enter the aquarium. And it's a series of puzzles in there. Combat will be less of an issue. Getting out of this pit is going to be a bit of an issue, though. This game's platforming is so bad. <laughs> Shockingly bad. Rain cannot navigate geometry of any sort. If it's not flat, she is going to go into an infinite falling animation. Just float in midair. I've gotten stuck in them permanently. The only way out is if you activate Rage, sometimes. It will bounce you up into a different area. And from there, you can hopefully dislodge yourself. But I once uh, bounced myself even higher into the geometry, making the problem worse. Surely there's a way to, like, infinite fly and get through the geometry and uh, speed run this game. But the game is separated into very strict loading zones that you cannot skip. So speedrunners really do not beat this game very fast at all. I think I saw a speedrun that was over two hours long. Oh, there is a third of the teleporters. But there's such non-issues that that is no problem for me. Seven, I'm in front of the aquarium. What do you think? It's your quickest route. Got it. But if a swarm of piranha starts walking around trying to eat me in there, you and I are gonna have words. That's a given. One of the best lines of the whole level. And uh, it does just get skipped due to the glitchiness of this game. Perfect. Severin, this whole place is flooded. Well, you're going to want to watch out for- Water? Yeah, thanks for the update. Just hanging a lampshade on the fact that Severin is, uh, useless. Hasn't helped us at all this whole game. But he is our constant companion for some reason. Basically the only human being that Rain tolerates. Good position for him to be in. Because uh, most human beings don't even get to live in this new world. Great. I need eyes in the back of my head. Every full tank is a booby trap and they know it. It's not that bad. Thing is, though, these people are all also vampires, as of the last level. Yet, they still intentionally flood everything around them. 
Certainly a risky play on their part. Now we've got a bunch of bondage guys. And a machine gun to deal with them. But we want to be careful not to blow up the tanks. Because then we'll be happy to do a little bit of platforming. But since we avoided them, no platforming for us. Just an easy stroll out of here. Which is somewhat clever. I could have been put to better use, but... It's something. <laughs> This game consistently shows that it has the capacity to be quite good. Always falls just a bit short, usually in charming and interesting ways. Shotgunners. Non-entities, I like to call them. Oh, my ammo's refilled. Let's use it. Apparently our bullets do not pierce glass, but that's fine. I do want that broken so that I can use it for platforming, though. This guy's just barely keeping me out of the water. And yeah, this whole puzzle thing. Not really that difficult because the water doesn't do all that much damage. You just can't stand in it, but you can hop in it all you want. And onto another set piece. Well, you know. Main exhibit hall in the aquarium. Good. I'm reading a drainage tunnel directly underneath the floor. Should be able to crack through to it with enough applied force. Jumping up and down probably won't do the trick, right? Afraid not. Find something to smash the floor with. That's something you're good at. Hmm. I need a better vantage point. That staircase might get me one. A little bit of dissonance between what we the player know and what Rain knows. Because the cutscene camera obviously indicated the solution of the puzzle. But Rain, she still needs to do a little climbing before she figures it out. I think maybe she'd have it at this moment, but no. She's too bothered by uh, all these people shooting at the tanks behind us, causing me to ragdoll. Find a way to get through that floor, Rain. Let's see. Enough force to smash through the floor. She's having an idea. It's coming to her. Any second now. There we go. Take down the whale. This one. The hitbox on this is ridiculous. I've hit it from every imaginable angle, but there we go. And down it goes. It's Reverse Clanker's Cavern. The bondage guy on the balcony absolutely was not supposed to be there. <laughs> we were supposed to have fought him on our way up to the whale. And he was supposed to have tried to move to our position, but no, he just got a starring role in that cutscene. Decent flow between set pieces in this area. Points for that. It is, as usual, pretty repetitive. What we've come to expect from Blood Rain at this point. The first game wasn't this repetitive, not by a long shot, I would say. They did a better job of having, like, a clever gimmick to each loading section you would go through, and each level would have, like, ten loading sections. This game, much more linear.
Oh, we're onto some platforming. The look of this area is certainly wonderful. Very, very apocalyptic. The sky certainly helps a lot. Looks good in both aura vision and regular vision. Some more humans we have failed to save. Not our problem. We just have to deal with the fact that we are the least heroic hero in video game history. And keep on going. She's nearby. I'm getting the shivers. Awful lot of shadows in here. This is one I really wish I could be there to help you with, Rain. I know, Severin. I've got the same wish. Yeah, I'm sure Severin would really help a lot if he were here. He could tag him in, he could body slam Ephemera or something. Definitely nothing that uh, we can do that he couldn't. Really, they should have just called this game Severin. Cut rain out entirely. If I'm not mistaken, that foreman that's on the roof is supposed to burst in any second now. There he is. Just a bit late for work. He picked a terrible time to show up, because we have full rage. How much more you think you can take? Precision is a major factor in the dodging in this game, because you do want to use it to position yourself in a good spot to get a bunch of safe hits. But the direction you dodge is relative to the camera. And thus, the direction it changes constantly. Because the camera is not very controllable. It's always in a cinematic state. When you're in combat. So dodging is a bit of a mess. That's why I'm always flipping in weird directions that make no sense. I'm trying to go in the logical direction, but I'm working with weird angles. Get some more rage from these helpful volunteers. They didn't want to see the new vampire world. They just wanted to feed a vampire one last time. Hell, we'll even top off our ammo. Completely full of resources. Hot on the trail of Ephemera. Things are looking good. Basically the opposite of how the rest of this level has looked. I thought Pharaoh removed you down here. That's what Pharaoh thought too, Shadow Bitch. And yet here I am. From where I stood, looks like you sold her out pretty hard. Oh, you saw that, did you? Yes, she had to go. Afraid there's only room for one traitor at the top. Yeah, and what's your daddy think about that? Oh, we'll find out soon enough, I think. Maybe our father will tell me just before I carve him open. If he wakes up first. You're a dirty girl, Ephemera. You play by dirty rules. Don't let it distract you, Rain. Keep your concentration. Who are you talking to, half-thing? Is it my old love, Mr. Severin? Where is he? When I'm done with you, I'd like to pay him a visit. See if we can rekindle an old flame. You know, I don't see that happening. You ready to do this? Very ready. 
But you'll have to watch out for me. I'm a sly one. Damn it, just fight me! I'd prefer to just kill you. In my own time, in my own way. Ephemera having knowledge of Severin is almost a character trait, but they don't explore it at all. Like, was Ephemera part of the Brimstone Society or something? What is going on there? We'll never know. On the shadows. That's why she charges her blasts. If she can't get to shadows, she can't recharge. I was just about to figure that out. Helpful tooltip after we do a little bit of damage against Ephemera. That's it. Try hey, the other ones. No fair getting hey, help from the audience. That's true. Tell you what, I'll pretend I didn't hear it. Severin, Ephemera doesn't think you're very fair. Is only the worst you to call her fair. Take the advantage and finish her off, Rain. Kill that shadow bitch. At least we've all agreed that uh, Ephemera has a consistent nickname. Uh oh, she threw a grenade at herself. Take this. So we just want to ignore Ephemera for now. Note over here, what is this? Apparently, this like circle of rocks on the ground here is one of her shadow portals, but there's nothing destructible in the area. So I kind of thought maybe it was this tree casting a shadow, but it's not. I've attacked it from every possible angle and got stuck in the wall doing so. So ignore the tree. The tree just should not be here. It is distracting that it is here. What you want to do is get in the pool and then hit the targeting button randomly and you'll spot this thing up above you. You can harpoon down and it will cause a flood to fill the shadow portal somehow. There's no discernible shadow in that area. But for some reason, that had to be done. Yeah, I got stopped on that for quite a while. Not ashamed to admit it, because that is obscure. But once that's taken care of, the rest of the shadow portals are at least recognizable as to what the hell's going on. Set up a nice light source in front of a big rock, and Ephemera gets the ability to recharge. Nice enough to give us the ability to recharge as well. But she does punish us every time we try to feed. She has an ability that knocks us out of it and sends us flying across the room. This tree here is very obviously casting a shadow, but it doesn't count as a shadow portal. So who cares? Another one over here. And then... A nice pagoda that we need to destroy. That should have been the last one. Yep, not seeing any other Leviathan crosses. So now we have a boss fight. Sort of. She has a lot of unique attacks that are clearly ripped off from Mortal Kombat. But they're pretty easy to avoid in that most of them will just fly right past you. And her health is terrible. She has much less health than that damn here we fought earlier. Which I appreciate, because I don't want to go through that damn pier fight ever again. That was Kestrel level bullshit. But what isn't is this fight. It's just a little gimmick fight, actually.
rather anticlimactic for something that's been built up since the clock tower way back when. Oh, it's not possible. You're just a mongrel half-blood. Yeah, that really stings, doesn't it? Rest in hell, Ephemera. And only now do we get the enthrall ability that the tooltip at the bottom of the screen has been telling us about for a very long time. Hi, what'd you think about that? Very impressive. Quite a good What do you think about that? My overlord Kagan, welcome. You are most welcome. Do not so presume to welcome me to my own kingdom, Xerx. Is it ready? Oh, it is most definitely ready. Show it to me. Of course, Father. Of course. It is here. Reconstructed from the principles of the Vesper Shard. The Sun Gun. These are portable versions of the large unit constructed on the roof. They feed from it. Threat approaching from the south. Airborne gunships, my lord. Take these and test them. And no prisoners. my favorite sound. Severin, what the hell just happened? What just happened to you, my dear, was me. So you're a renegade vampire killer, not as impressive as I expected. Ah, but you've got me at a disadvantage. You don't know me? Why, I am Xerx Megastophili, Grand Inquisitor. Severin? Yes, he's on the list. Full-blooded direct descendant of Kagan, your half-brother. Xerx is like three down from the top. Do you ever read anything? Fuck off. Zerk's baby, your meat. These later levels sure do love ending with just a slew of cutscenes. It's as though they set up way too many plot points, so many moving parts, and just dicked around for like four levels, not resolving any of them. So now they gotta cram them all in at the end, but it does look like we are approaching the end. Like, Kagan's Tower here has to be the final level of the game, right? I did think to myself after recording the last video that, uh, Feral's death was very comic booky. Not to say, like, oh, I called it. At the time of recording, I did think that Feral was legitimately dead. Then I realized that perhaps, maybe she isn't. Which I'm fine with. The reason I like that she was killed in a cutscene is because she was a non-entity, had no character whatsoever, so this has expanded her character just enough to make it satisfying to later kill her. Or maybe we'll team up with her, because at this point we have the exact same goal. 
no reason to have any animosity towards one another besides our previous uh, alliances, which have all been severed here in the post-apocalypse. We sure got a lot of loose ends to tie up here, but I'm invested in what's going to happen. Hopefully you're also invested enough to join me for what I assume will be the final level of Blood Rain 2.